During the process to build an application for organizing an event to be held on a certain date and place, we've created a KB in Genexus with the necessary transactions. Based on this KB, we've developed the web application and smart device application to be used by the agency's staff. So far, we've modeled, developed, and prototyped applications generating in .NET for the web application and in Android for the mobile application. But Genexus offers other mechanisms to easily prototype a smart device application, whether using other emulators or running it directly on the device depending on the selected mobile platform. In the first case, we will see how to generate an application for Android devices. When the pattern Work With Smart Devices was applied to a transaction, the smart device generator was automatically added. If we go to its properties, we see that the application is generated for Android and iOS by default, and that the main platform is Android. After opening Genexus, an Android emulator is opened by default to test the application in case you don't have a device to do it. The best way to prototype is on the device. The emulator doesn't allow testing everything because no emulator behaves in exactly the same way as the actual device. For example, if we want to use the camera, record a video, record audio, and so on. If you have an Android device connected to the development computer via USB, Genexus detects that the device is connected and doesn't open the emulator. If your device is connected to the computer and the emulator is opening anyway, it may indicate a driver problem or that the USB debugging option is not enabled from development settings slash applications on the device. Please refer to the Genexus wiki for more information on this topic. Once the Android device is connected, if a startup object has been indicated, Genexus generates the application, compiles it, and installs it on the device. Every time F5 is pressed in Genexus, the application will be updated on the device through the cable. If no smart device object has been defined as startup, Genexus installs the knowledge base navigator software on the device using the cable and runs the application in interpreted mode through the KBN. Every time you press F5, the application content is updated and the changes can be seen at runtime. Running the compiled application is the best of both options, as it will allow you to test all its features in a more realistic way. What's more, it allows prototyping offline applications, something that's not possible with the KBN. Due to this and other reasons, Android's KBN is being used increasingly less while testing the compiled application is becoming more popular. Remember that reading the QR code of the compiled package on the developer menu screen is another possibility to install the compiled application on the device. It'll install a file with an APK extension, which contains all the application's logic. However, in order to install applications on a device, they have to be signed. For Android, the generated APK file is always signed, so you don't have to do anything else to install the application on the device. Now we'll see how to prototype in other platforms, starting with iOS. To prototype on devices such as the iPhone or the iPad, which run on iOS, first we set the Smart Device Generator properties. In this case, we also have different options to run the application. That's why it's necessary to indicate how it will be run by setting the execution type property within the iOS specific group of properties. The simulator Mac option enables the application to run on an emulator of the selected device on a Mac computer. The settings required include the device to be emulated, the name of the Mac computer where the application will be sent, and connection credentials, that is to say, username and password. The necessary components to run this type of application must be installed on the Mac, which must be connected to the same network as the device being used to develop the Genexus application. Upon pressing F5, the Xcode project is generated, sent to the Mac, and run using the emulator in the Mac. This time, the application doesn't have to be signed because it's run on the emulator. When a device is connected to the Mac, the iOS device Mac option makes it possible to send the Xcode project to this Mac, compile it, and have the IPA package generated and installed on the device in order to run the application on it. In this case, the signature must be installed on the Mac and the device must be duly authorized. The options marked as Local, iTunes Sync, 
Build IPA, and Build for Distribution make it possible to send the Xcode project to the Mac, compile it, and generate the IPA package in order to copy it to the development computer. The output window of the Genexus IDE shows where the file will be copied. For iTunes Sync, after the IPA package is copied to the development computer, iTunes is automatically opened to show the application in its catalog in order to install it on the device connected to the computer with a cable. For Build IPA, the compiled application is copied to the Genexus model folder, but iTunes is not opened. Finally, in Build for Distribution, the application is compiled on the Mac using the distribution signature, and the generated IPA file is copied to the Genexus model folder. When Knowledge Base Navigator device is selected, the application is generated and run on the device via the KBN, which must be downloaded from the Apple Store and installed on the device. This option allows running an iOS application even if we don't have a Mac, because it isn't compiled and is run in interpreted mode through the KBN. With this procedure, prototyping is wireless. The device must be connected to the same wireless network as the development computer and must have notifications enabled. Once the user logs into the device with his or her GX technical username, the device is registered as associated with the user profile and it can be selected to complete the execution device property. Every time F5 is pressed in Genexus, the application will be automatically updated on the device. Now we'll see how to prototype in Windows Phone and Windows 8. We'll talk about Windows 8 and Windows Phone generators at the same time because they're very similar. In order to generate an application for Windows 8 or Windows Phone, first we set the corresponding properties in the Smart Device Generator, that is to say, the Generate Windows 8 or Windows Phone property to True, and the Main Platform property to Windows 8 or Windows Phone respectively. When the platform is Windows 8 or Windows Phone, there are no specific properties to set. In this case, prototyping is similar to that of Android. If Genexus detects a connected device with Windows 8 or Windows Phone, it'll copy the application to the device and run it. If a connected device is not detected, an emulator will be opened. When using these generators, a startup object must always be defined because the application on the device is only run in compiled mode, which means that the KBN can't be used. Regardless of using the emulator or the device, the development computer must have the SDK of Windows Phone or Windows 8 installed, depending on the case. In addition, Visual Studio must be installed in both cases, even though the free version is enough, Visual Studio Express. For more information about requirements, visit the links shown below. Lastly, we will discuss prototyping for the BlackBerry platform. Prototyping with BlackBerry is basically the same as prototyping with Android and Windows platforms. First, we set the corresponding properties in the Smart Device Generator. That is to say, we set the Generate BlackBerry property to True and the Main Platform property to BlackBerry. Just like in Android, if a connected device is not detected when running the application, a BlackBerry emulator is opened. If a BlackBerry device is connected to the computer, Genexus will detect the connected device. When the startup object hasn't been set, the KBN is installed and the application is run in interpreted mode. Otherwise, the compiled application is sent as a file with JAD extension. The compiled application can also be installed from the developer menu using the corresponding QR code. When an application is generated for BlackBerry, it isn't signed, but the process to request the signature is easy and free of charge. For more details, please visit the link displayed above. Once the application is installed on the device, we can see the various options available to run it, such as accessing REST services from the application. REST services can be installed on a computer in a private network with Wi-Fi, or on a server available online. In this way, the smart device application installed on the device will connect to this private network or to the web via Wi-Fi to access the REST services. Another option is to configure a computer-to-computer -computer network, also known as ad hoc network. 
This possibility offered by the Windows operating system allows us to establish a Wi-Fi connection directly between two computers or between a computer and the device with Wi-Fi connection. In this case, our development computer will work as a web server. For more information about how to configure this type of network, you can visit the link shown below. Lastly, Genexus provides another option to run an application by installing it on a cloud with a single click. This is done simply by setting the Deploy to Cloud property of the default generator to Yes. Upon pressing F5, the web application is installed on the cloud. In addition, the smart device application is installed on the device. By default, the apps2.genexususx.com server in the Amazon cloud is used. It's specifically available to prototype Genexus applications. When the application is being generated, GX technical credentials are requested in order to install it on the cloud. Once installed, it can be accessed from the device by consuming REST services directly from the application on the cloud. In this video, we've seen how to prototype and run our smart device application. Once it's ready, we want to publish the application in our own server or in the corresponding stores. We will see this in the next video.